I still remember going for a meeting that evening where all the security agencies and the intelligence were meeting. My ADC, a young captain, he asked me, sir, what will happen now? Pardon my language. I said, we'll get the s***. Was it an intelligence failure? Here I would like to clarify a few things. We have an enemy who is always up to a mischief. Mm. On the line of control, inside the hinterland, in Kashmir, in mainland India, every time. So the number of incidents which are avoided or which are not allowed to take place because of the intelligence agencies, the security forces, the synergy, those incidents or the numbers don't come out in the media or in the public domain. And there's a reason for it. Suppose there is an incident which was to happen and we have got the whiff of it. We picked up the chatter and we avoided that incident. Now, if we announce it that this has happened and this is what we did and pat our backs openly, the enemy would come to know how we picked it up and how we not allowed it to happen. Hmm. So, it's a game in the intelligence where you don't say what you have been able to avoid. Right. So that the enemy doesn't pick up your cap capabilities, your resources, your assets. Hmm. So coming back to Pulwama, if out of 100 incidents which were planned by the enemy, 99 are not allowed to happen. And unfortunately, I repeat again, unfortunately, one incident happens. And that incident happened to be a very big one. So that does not mean in any way that the intelligence agencies are not doing their job because they were able to avoid, say, 99 or whatever numbers. One is incident is unfortunate, that's uh, agreed. Mm. But we cannot start blaming our intelligence agencies or security forces because they are in the line of fire literally every day. They are away from their families, they are losing their life and limb of course. for the nation. And I would request all those people who shouted from the rooftops that it was intelligence failure, to spare a thought. Spare a thought the type of job we are doing. There is a whole nation which is behind this. There is a proper regular army which is doing all this. Now to curtail the actions of those people, which are being planned at that level, it takes lots of efforts. But, sir, my question is, uh, it's not to castigate, but to ask where... Uh, was there some systems uh, like the the SOPs were not followed? Sare ke sare ek saath gaye the. Maybe that there was some failure in that. Would you say? Ma'am, I have seen Kashmir, like you have seen for last more than thirty years, how initially the convoys used to move, how the roads used to be closed, the link roads used to be blocked, and nobody was allowed to come on the roadside. Then, when the terror graph came down, when the incidents came down. The peace, more or less, got established. So a lot of things were relaxed. Hmm. It was because the general public was feeling the pinch and they were somehow not allowed to move on the road where the military convoys or the BSF or the police convoys were moving. So by and by, with this civilian traffic also coming on the roads, and over the last 30 years, the number of vehicles which have increased, the automobiles, the two-wheelers which have increased and people are using it. So there was... Uh, 
I'll say very less checking or control over the civilian traffic onto the roads when the military convoys were moving. Yeah. So the terrorists took advantage of this uh, relaxation of our security forces, wherein we were doing it for our public. They are good, and they took advantage of this, and they, in a civil vehicle, in a civil mode, they entered the convoy, and the rest, as you are aware, they blew off the vehicle. So if those civilians were not allowed on the road. This incident would not have happened. How did it change the situation on the ground? Because uh, an attack like this, it does demoralize. So how do you how do you keep uh, keep it going with your with your men? How do you keep them motivated when something like this happens? So many casualties. Now exactly the same point. How to keep the morale high? I have written a detailed chapter in my book, uh, which we can talk later. But uh, on that day. on twitter on instagram on facebook for next 3 days from a dialogue from a popular hindi movie how is the josh hmm. was changed to how is the jash referring to jash mohammed especially all the pakistani handles so we knew as a system as a security forces that we need to hit back at the earliest hmm. i still remember going for a meeting that evening where all the security agencies and the intelligence were meeting my adc a young captain He asked me, sir, what will happen? Pardon my language. I said, we'll get. Hmm. And we did exactly that as a very concerted effort of intelligence and security within 48, within 100 hours. We eliminated the module which had carried out the Pulwama incident, and that is where the morale which you referred to, hmm. morale came back. The best way to liven up the soldiers' morale is. to achieve success.